Shalom, Shalom, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech, Olam. Blessed is the Lord our God, King of the heavens and the earth. Amen. Yeshua, Jesus, is Lord. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, and the ending, who was, and is, and is to come. He is the Lord, God, Almighty, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. That's according to Isaiah 9, verse 6, Micah 5, verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, and Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Yeshua, Jesus, as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. I believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three, are one, according to John 14, in 1 John 5, verse 7, in the King James Bible. Amen. I believe that God was manifested in the flesh. He was born of a virgin by the Spirit of God. He lived a perfect life and gave his life on the cross as a sacrifice, as a sin offering to pay our sin debt so that we can go free and be forgiven and be reconciled back to the Father in heaven. Amen. Now, if you want to be saved, you must confess Yeshua, Jesus, as Lord, as the Messiah of Israel, turn away from sin, uh, follow his commandments, and finish the race till the very end. Amen. Now with that said, today I want to do a study on the pagan New Year and the Greek god Janus. Now, when I was born again, I, I began to wonder why it is that, you know, our calendar systems and our months and everything are set up as they are. And a lot of it is just pagan false religion. And it doesn't make sense why God would have the new year begin in the dead of winter, okay? And that's because the Most High God of Heaven did not uh, ordain that the new year would begin in the dead of winter, but rather that is a construct of the God of this world, who is Satan. And he is the fallen angel, he is the king of darkness. And it only makes sense that Satan would have the new year begin in the dead of winter because that is essentially when the Antichrist will rise. Now I'm speaking metaphorically. As the return of Christ is like the dawning of a new day at his second coming. And before Christ returns, everything will be turned into darkness. It is a day of tribulation, the day of darkness, where the Antichrist, Lucifer's son, will rule all nations. Now, this is the new world order of Satan, but when Christ returns at the true dawn, at the true spring, you will see that Christ will return in heaven with power and glory, and he will reign all nations with a rod of iron. So I believe these things are very symbolic, and I believe that Satan and God very much understand this symbology. Now, we of course know Christ created all things, and so of course he would set the seasons uh, in motion at the right time. You know, the, the Bible actually says that, uh, you know, Passover is the first month. The month of Passover, which is the Abib month, when the new ears of uh, barley begin to sprout, Okay, that is the first month, that is the new year, according to Leviticus 23. And so that only makes sense that new life is the new year, and that's when both the covenant of Moses was initiated, as well as the new covenant when Christ died for our sins on Passover, uh, around 30, 33 AD. Okay, now let's take a look here at Britannica concerning the pagan god Janus, that's why it's called January, I believe, because of the Greek god. It says, in Janus in the Roman religion, the animistic spirit of doorways, 
Now, none of that is important, but if we continue, we'll see the worship of Jan is traditionally dated back to Romulus and a period even before the actual founding of the city of Rome. There were many Jani ceremonial gateways in Rome. These were usually freestanding structures that were used for symbolically auspicious entrances or ex exits. Particularly, superstition was attached to the departure of a Roman army, for which there were lucky and unlucky ways to march through a Janus. The most famous Janus in Rome was the Janus Geminus, which was actually a shrine of Janus at the north side of the Forum. Okay, so we see here that the Janus doorway was open in the time of war and were kept closed when Rome was at peace. So in a way it has to do with a war, which is death and destruction, and then peace, which is like a new beginning. And it has to do with transitioning into a new cycle. Therefore, it also seems very much related to the rise of the Antichrist through death and destruction, the rise of his new world order, okay, out of the ashes of war. And, uh, you know, it, it basically leads into the dark winter, okay, the, the, the darkest time that man has ever known, the seven year tribulation period where the king of darkness, the Antichrist, will reign right before the dawn of the return of Christ, which is like spring. Now here we see that Janus is featured as a double-headed uh, being, okay? And, and one face looks at the past and the next looks at the future. So it's about transitioning to a new system. Well, what are we doing right now? We're transitioning into a new system, a new world order. You might say through war, through uh, death and destruction, and a whole bunch of false flags by the Luciferians. I tend to think that this pagan god Janus is also similar to the Hindu god Shiva. Now, what does Shiva represent? represents a new creation or a new life or a new uh, new period or new cycle out of the midst of death and destruction. Now this is an article. Uh, it says the scientific symbolism of the statue of Shiva, Nataraja at CERN, Switzerland. It says Lord Shiva is one of the most important deities in the Hindu religion. And it says here that Shiva's form of Nataraja symbolizes the cosmic dance of creation and destruction. More interestingly, CERN, which is located at Geneva, that lies on the French-Swiss border, is a European organization for nuclear research whose primary function is the oversight of the Large Hadron Collider. So, we have this, you know, pagan god of death and destruction and rebirth, okay, symbolizing the rise of the new world order out of death and destruction but this deity is also the god of this the spirits the god of the dead and i believe this is one and the same as apollyon the king of the bottomless pit who will be opened in the day of tribulation the day of darkness okay kind of like the dead of winter and apollyon will rise and destroy uh, a lot of people on the earth Okay, it says here, the statue was gifted to CERN by the government of India to celebrate the research center's long association with India. Okay, the symbolism of the statue of Nataraja. Lord Shiva is one of three primary deities of the Hindu trinity and is worshipped as the destroyer and transformer of the world. Furthermore, the symbolism of Shiva Nataraja is a unique yet profound merge of religion, art, and science as one. In God's endless dance of creation, uh, preservation, destruction, and paired graces is hidden a deep understanding of our universe. Okay, so it's talking about the birth of a new 
era, a new cycle, a new creation, okay, the one world order, and the Antichrist reign out of death and destruction, in my opinion. And it is the time when Shiva or Apollyon will be released from the bottomless pit to destroy the world as a destroyer in the dark winter. Now, if we go back to this, just a symbolism of winter itself, winter is a time where it's cold, there's no life, everything is sort of barren and lifeless, okay? I believe it is a symbol of the tribulation period when God's light will be removed from the earth, his spirit uh, will be pretty much not there, okay? His, the warmth of his spirit will not be there and it'll just be, you know, lifeless, cold darkness, okay? Just like in the beginning, on the first day when it was darkness and then God created light and separated the light from the darkness and called the day, day and night, night. Now, on the other hand, God's new year, according to Leviticus 23, is the spring, and that's when new life flourishes. Okay, you might say it was the time that the children of Abraham, the Israelites, received new life when they were brought out of Egypt, out of the oppression, the 400 years of bondage and slavery. It is the time when they killed the Passover lamb so that they could be brought out of Egypt and not destroyed by the destroyer in the dark night. Okay, so we also see that Christ died on Passover, which gives the Christian new life if we believe in him and receive his spirit and turn away from our sins. We could have new life in Christ. Okay, what a beautiful thing. <laughs> Now, if you look at Leviticus 23, it says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourth day of the first month, that even is the Lord's Passover. So here we see Leviticus 23, verse 5. The 14th day of the first month. Well, the first month signifies a new year. And that is the time of the Passover. When Egypt uh, saw the plagues of God and the Israelites, you know, killed the Passover lamb so that they could flee from Egypt. And it says, On the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Unto the Lord seven days you must eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation, so on and so forth. And it also says that it is a time when you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. So that same month, Passover, you also see that the first fruits are coming in, which signifies it is the month of Abib, the month of the first fruits, okay, which is in spring. Now I wanted to show how the tribulation period is like the dark and cold winter, the day of darkness, right before Christ returns. It says, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yet all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So it's, it's a time of lifeless destruction. Just like the winter, you know, after the fall, you know, it's just a bunch of lifeless dead trees. And it says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Okay, this is talking about, I believe, the return of Christ. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. In Isaiah 13, it also talks about the day of tribulation, the day of darkness, when the sun, moon, and stars will not give their light, 
It'll be only darkness. It says Isaiah 13 verse 6, How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners there out of it. Okay, very much like winter, where there is no life, but just a bunch of lifeless branches. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. What do we see in, in the winter months? Well, the winter solstice is the darkest day of the year. That means less and less sunlight comes to the earth. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. <clears throat> and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Okay, this is talking about most of the people dying upon the earth. Okay, that is the day of tribulation, when most of the sinners are purged out of the earth. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Okay, so I believe that, okay, these people who are celebrating the new year in the dead of winter is actually celebrating the day of tribulation, the day of darkness, the, the reign of the Antichrist, whereas God and his people celebrate the spring when there's new life, kind of like the new life that Christ brings at his return, with his, you know, resurrection of the dead and the glorification of his saints and the establishment of his millennial kingdom in Jerusalem, which brings peace to all nations. Okay, the swords will be turned into plowshares and into pruning hooks. Okay, so God's going to destroy all the war, all the wicked people, and he will bring peace on the earth and establish new life from Jerusalem. Anyhow, I pray this study was a blessing, and I hope to see you all in heaven very soon, as I believe the four horsemen are about to ride, the rapture is about to happen, and sudden destruction comes. So please get right with Christ before it is too late, and shalom. Until next time, amen.